Do you ever feel like your Agile retrospectives are just going through the motions, same problems, different sprint? You are not alone. So many teams are stuck in this rut. They tick the retrospective box, but nothing really changes. That is where this video comes in. We are diving deep into why most retrospectives feel like a waste of time, really, and the secret weapon that turns them into powerful engines for improvement. A little hint, it has to do with goals and with most retrospectives being reactive. So as a bonus to this video, I've got a free downloadable resource to make it easier for you to take in what I'm saying here and use it in your next retrospective. So stick around, you won't wanna miss it. Let's get started. Hi, my friend, welcome or welcome back to All Things Agile. I'm Petula, your host here, and we are going to dive right into why your retrospectives should never feel like empty or devoid of a goal. Most retrospectives I see teams running and scrum masters running for their teams are actually what I call reactive retrospectives and you should avoid them. They are not engaging and they are in fact wasteful. Here's what I mean by that. Most teams resort to retrospective templates. They either use a complicated template or go through very basic formats like what went well, what went bad, things like that. Now, here is a wild proposition. What if instead of simply going through the motions of bad, good, or start, stop, continue, retrospectives became a space for deeper understanding of the problems and of elements of performance for a team? Say your team is using Scrum. Say your retrospectives are usually glad, sad, mad. What's happening here? Are you tackling the underlying issues of what happens inside the team or are you just chasing after the latest fire? In one sprint, you're discussing a difficult feature, a colleague's bad behavior and a broken build. And in the next, uh, I don't know, a, a new colleague is being onboarded and you have a strange request from the sales team. This is noisy and it doesn't lead your team to meaningful improvement. You might fix a quick annoyance, but that's about it. I call these reactive retrospectives and they are wasteful in two ways. First, in true agile fashion, if you have a problem, you should deal with it right away. Don't wait for the next retrospective to fix it. Use the best data available at the moment that the problem is happening and solve the issue. Don't create a debt or list of problems yet to solve. Second, Reactive retrospectives are scattered. You're jumping from one related issue to the next without a sense of progress or direction. Like I said, today it's the build. Tomorrow it's a colleague with a challenging behavior. It's like playing catch up without ever really moving forward. It's a huge misunderstanding that people have that retrospectives are a place for solving problems. They are not. They are a forum for improving, for getting better. And that can mean yes to improving on things that we are not good yet, but also double down on things that we are already good at. Improving is different than solving problems. You can solve problems and never really improve because you solve for the moment, you stay on the surface. Improvement is about tackling deeper aspects of the team performance, how they do things, and also how they think about the things that they do. So how about breaking free from this reactivity? How about using retrospectives to drive real growth and understanding inside your team? What I always teach teams and their leaders alike is to look for the retrospective as a process for continuous improvement and for team performance. And then you attack it with the seriousness of planning. So what is it that you have in planning that is massively different than the average retrospective that you see? It is a goal. So we start with a goal. When you start retrospectives with a clear goal and follow then a structured approach, you set your team up for success. You flip the script. You stop being that reactive and start being proactive about improvement. But now here's an important distinction. The key for effective retrospectives that drive continuous improvement 
is to identify a meaningful theme that resonates with your team. Then commit to following through on a goal that is derived from that theme for the next few iterations, for a few sprints, for a few releases. Now, how do you do that? Well, my friend, you may be the one noticing the trends from the data. There is a reason why teams have a team lead or a team coach or manager. It is in your role to keep this zoomed out view and look for what the team might be missing while they're busy and engaged delivering their work. Now, what is it that you're looking at? Everything is data, defects, cycle time, the types of user stories you have, feedback from other people. Check the tools you use, Jira, Azure DevOps Board. These tools are not just for hosting your user story cards. Extract the data from there. Maybe some trends appear and you know on your dashboard from the tasks that the team does. So you could suggest some of the themes based on the observations that you're having. It is a valid starting point. Or you could also show your team a list of possible themes and their importance to get the team started and then let them pick one that they find compelling and they wanna move forward with it, which has everything to do with the free resources that I am sharing with you today as well. Now, if everything else fails, listen to your team's concerns, ask some powerful questions and agree on a focus area that seems ripe for improvement. Let's add some color here by looking at an example. So maybe your build is broken several times during the week, every week. It's a good candidate for improvement, a problem that keeps happening. And the solution is not exactly to fix the build when it's broken because it seems to be constantly broken. It's rather avoiding to have it broken. Now, it might seem at first that the conversation is about build issues, but I promise you that if you start probing, the conversation becomes quickly about quality. You don't need a full hour to decide that you need to make sure your build always run green, but you can use that as a leverage for all of the aspects of quality you might be missing out as a team and start with the most important ones that are being shown by the build being broken. Then you can make a dashboard. It's about the tests that you do or that you don't do. It's about the static analysis of the code. It's about rushing and never have anyone do a code review. One by one, those are quality elements that can be tackled. You add measures for a couple of those in your dashboard. You follow them until the trend is showing positive results. Then you ask yourself, what else do we need in order to maintain quality above our minimum threshold, our acceptable level of quality? Over time, you have test coverage, failure rate, release success rate, and so many more KPIs in place as part of the way your team develops. And then the team notices, well, quality seems solved. We know our way around it. We, you know, we know how to get great software out of the door. Now, let's say the next issue is the, despite all of that quality, we seem to be slow. Our clients are not so happy with how long it takes for us to deliver. So I don't know, maybe that could be the next theme for improvement. And since we already have a great dashboard and great practices centered around quality, if we speed up so much that we break things in the process, we will know immediately our dashboard will show us. How is that for timely feedback? So you see, the retrospective is not about the little issues of the day-to-day -day of a team because that's not where performance is. The key for stellar, effective retrospective is to find a theme. Now, what do you mean by that? What could be these themes for continuous improvement? As you can imagine, they would range from technical aspects to human aspect. They could mean tackling technical debt, improving communication internally or with adjacent teams. It could be defining and measuring quality. It could be addressing any other critical performance aspect that's holding your team back. 
So you would need a nice structured conversation about what performance means or what the next best steps for performance looks like for your team. And every team is different and the situations are very unique to what they are facing. That being said though, there are things that come back all the time. So to help you out, I've come up with a free guide with 10 critical themes that can really help you take your retrospectives to the next level and finally start generating improvement results for your team. Not just simple sprint revision. You go from that stale generic retrospective to stellar and engaging ones because you will be addressing the things that matter. These are themes that come up time and again, especially in software development teams or teams that deal with technology. In this guide, you'll get to know what the 10 themes are, but also understand their importance. And I also offer a few questions in there that you can use with your team just to get started in exploring that theme in a very meaningful way so that you can decide on a very valuable, very meaningful goal for your upcoming retrospective. And I will tell you, I wrote this guide because I myself remember how much I suffered for many, many years back in the day with this struggle of making agile retrospectives seem like remotely a powerful process for continuous improvement. And it took me really a lot of time to zero in in what agile retrospectives, you know, the effective retrospectives really look like. Retrospectives are way more than just the fun meetings. Many of them are not fun at all. And on the other end of the spectrum, they are also not the boring meeting that you're just going to check off uh, from a checklist. So my goal is that you can restore retrospectives as a meaningful tool for team performance improvement. Excellent team performance makes the life of each team member easier in the long run. Even if in the short term, the interactions and the questions in the retrospective might be a little bit more uncomfortable. The beauty of proactive retrospectives is based on a theme is that they allow you to move beyond surface level discussions and dive deeper into the themes that really matter. By committing to a theme, you create the sense of continuity and focus that is missing from the reactive, the more generic retrospectives. You'll be able to track progress and really celebrate those small wins and make meaningful changes that stick. I hope this video gave you a good insight into what I consider the enemy number one of agile retrospectives, that lacking of a goal, the reactive retrospective. So go download the guide. It's totally free. And if retrospective is something you really want to get better at, if you missed my last video, my previous video, it was all about the three common mistakes that we all make at some point when running agile retrospectives. But I also did a while back, a mini class live here on YouTube that was about, well, if you feel that your agile retrospectives are not generating continuous improvement, what could that be about? So it's all in that mini class is some 20 something minutes. I hope you enjoy it and I'll leave it all for you here in the playlist and um, yeah, and go check that out. Other than that, this video ends here, my friend, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.